14 flight attendant secrets you probably didn't know. Hi, I'm Ben from the channel All Things Human, and I'm your host today. But more on that later. Number 14, alcohol altitude. There's a common saying spoken by those who travel often, and it goes, one drink in the air is worth two on the ground. Turns out that the super high altitude which happens when flying on a plane, actually thins your blood. This makes all that yummy alcohol hit you harder and faster. So be careful of those miniature drink bottles. They may be more drunkenly dangerous than you may have once believed. Number 13, dimming the lights. Have you ever wondered why during that last leg of the flight, as the airplane is about to make its final descent towards the landing, the lights will turn down low? It's probably not what you think. The truth is that the powers that be dim the interior lights in case there is cause for an evacuation upon landing. You see, this way, your eyes will already be adjusted to the darkness. So if the worst case scenario occurs, they can shove you right off that plane and you will be able to see better once safely thrown outside the aircraft. Thanks for all of your concern, Mr. Airline. Good to know someone up there is looking out for us. Number 12, new headphones? Think again. According to several high-flying personnels in the know, many of whom previously worked in the warehouses which supply airlines with headphones, yes, even those headphones which come shrink-wrapped in plastic, the majority of those headphones are not new. As a way to cut costs, most airlines will have the headphones which are left behind, cleaned, and then repackaged to be resold on the next flight. So, next time you choose to fly, you may want to pack an extra set of earbuds, just in case. Number 11, Sky Mall Scoop. This self-titled in-flight publication can still be found on most flights tucked securely into the back pocket of the seat in front of you. Their products range from whimsical and childlike to parental and fix it yourself and all the way to ridiculously expensive, unnecessary, and outlandish. But here's a neat and easy tip to remember. It turns out that this magazine is astronomically overpriced and nearly all of the merchandise which this magazine offers can be found online for much, much less. Sometimes half as much as Sky Mall is attempting to sell it to you for. Number 10, tipping tip. Flight attendants don't lead super glamorous lives. In fact, some airlines don't pay for their flight attendants lunch. Instead, many of these high flying men and women have to bring their own lunch from home or buy something fast in the airport concierge. Also, for many flight attendants, the clock doesn't officially start ticking until the door is closed and the plane is finally beginning to take off. So, despite airlines and the Association of Flight Attendants publicly discouraging tipping, something like a small monetary gift as a thank you for their gratuity is not only appreciated, but a huge help to many struggling flight attendants. Also, this may have some additional benefits. Some flight attendants will be so grateful to get a nice five or $10 tip with that first drink you buy that you may end up drinking for free for the duration of your flight. Number nine, lavatory locks. That tiny bathroom on board the plane is always frustrating. There's not a lot of space. The water in the sink is never the right temperature and even getting the little lock and light switch to turn on can be annoying and sometimes perplexing. However, there is something worse, turns out, that if you take too long in the bathroom, one of the flight attendants might pop in to check on you to make sure that you're okay. Usually, they'll knock on the door first, but if you don't bother to respond, they might just walk in. That's because there's a mechanism, usually hidden behind the no smoking badge, which allows the attendant to slide the bolt and unlock the door from the outside. This is done due to the unlikely event that someone becomes incapacitated or is too ill for whatever reason to open the door themselves. Number eight, lightning strikes, no problem. For those of you suffering from a fear of flying, allow this piece of hidden flight attendant knowledge to reduce at least one of your highborn fears. If your flight enters stormy weather, have no fear of those bursts of light which flash through the thick glass. Lightning actually strikes airplanes all the time. 
And contrary to popular fear, the odds of your plane crashing are staggeringly low. In fact, it's been estimated that every US plane is struck by lightning at least once a year. Sometimes the aircraft itself is the trigger for the lightning storm. Planes traveling through a heavily charged storm cloud can more often than not result in a lightning strike. And get this, the last crash actually attributed to a lightning strike occurred in 1967. That's over a half a century old. Number seven, cabin crew credentials. Here are some requirements you may not know about your flight crew. Flight attendants must be between 4 foot 11 and 6 foot 3. This is due to how long their arms must be able to stretch in order to help passengers with loading their luggage into and out of the storage bins. Flight attendants weight must be proportional to their height and they must have at least 20-30 vision. But that's not all folks. Hair must be collar length or shorter. Piercings and tattoos are a big no-no and are strictly forbidden. Makeup must also be minimal. Male flight attendants must be well-groomed as well. That means no beards, guys. Clean shaven only. Apparently, these grooming requirements are in place to protect an image of professionalism to skittish passengers. Number six, pilot power. In case you happen to be one of those terribly disruptive airplane passengers, you may want to think twice about messing around when the pilot is present. This is because the airplane captain has the same power as a ship captain, which suffices to say is a lot. Turns out the pilot in command has the authority to order any passenger they deem to be troublesome to be handcuffed in order to hand them over to the police as soon as the aircraft lands and thereafter have them formally arrested. Besides that, pilots have the power to write fines to anyone they decide deserves one, and even take the last will and testament of dying passengers. Warning, do not mess with the pilot, or not only will you regret it later, but you may end up lamenting your decision from the inside of a jail cell. Number five, sleeping pilots. For those of you watching who already have fears about flying, you may want to close your ears to this next flight attendant secret. Pilots are allowed and even at times encouraged to be on duty for 16 hours without taking a break. That's why for many flights, especially those high endurance based long haul flights, there are more often than not two pilots. This is so one can take a nap while the other takes over the controls of the flying aircraft. However, in one survey, half the pilots from several question airlines admitted to falling asleep involuntarily mid-flight. Better hope there's a co-pilot on board, and best pray at least one of these aviators manages to remain awake during the duration of the flight. Otherwise, it's lights out for the entire plane. Number four, be wary of water. Never drink the tap water offered on a plane. This includes inside that tiny closet lavatory and expands all the way to swallowing the colorful collection of coffees and teas. And here's why. The ports to remove lavatory waste and refill the aircraft with potable water are more often than not only a few inches away from each other. Several flight attendants on a survey admitted to filling up water bottles with water from the holding tanks. Also, those holding tanks are usually as old as the plane itself and aren't cleaned very often, if at all. That water in the coffee pot may be swarming with all kinds of bacteria. Best to stick with bringing your own bottled water. And if you simply must have coffee in order to survive, you may want to spend the extra few bucks inside the airport concourse at Starbucks. Number three, cash me outside voucher. A sad fact of flying, most airlines not only overbook, but it happens way more often than not. This is done to ensure that they make as much money from each flight as possible. Most people would be shocked at the staggering amount of flyers who happen to miss their flights. Airlines are counting on it. Yet, this method doesn't always go according to plan, which results in many passengers getting overbooked and consequently 
getting bumped off their preferred, already paid for flight. If this unlucky traveler happens to be you, know your rights. Your airline will most likely attempt to bribe you with vouchers, which can be exchanged for purchases through that airline. However, the pros will tell you to refuse those bits of paper masquerading as money and instead go for cold, hard cash payouts. If you are involuntarily denied boarding, you are entitled to a cash payment on the spot. This can net you up to $1,300 or 400% of the value of the one-way fare, depending on the length of your unscheduled delay. Number two, oxygen mass time limits. If you've ever flown before, you're probably familiar with that song and dance the flight attendants will do before takeoff. You know, the one, that boring speech with the strange arm movements about what to do in case of an emergency. Well, maybe next time you should put down that iPhone and listen, because those next few moments could very well save your life. Here's a helpful tidbit to help you survive an airborne tragedy. As soon as those oxygen masks descend from their containment cartridges, you only have approximately 15 minutes worth of oxygen located inside those face strapping devices. This should easily be enough time for the pilot to lower the aircraft's altitude, which will restore oxygen levels back to where you can once again breathe easily. However, at altitude, you will only have around 15 to 20 seconds to secure your mask before your body succumbs to a lack of oxygen, causing you to pass out or worse. So, when those attendants of flight tell you to put on your mask before helping others, they really mean it. Number one, think planes are clean, think again. While most people fret about that sickly recycled air pumping through the airplane's ventilation vents, Relax, the air on board is constantly filtered, approximately 20 times an hour in fact, through hospital grade HEPA filters. Now, as for the sterile conditions of every other aspect of the aircraft's interior, anyone afraid of germs may wanna close their eyes for the rest of this segment. We're to those who fly often. Watch out for all those nasty contaminated surfaces. Those fold down trays from which travelers often eat their onboard meal are reported to be the absolutely nastiest and filthiest parts of the plane. That's right, be careful about resting your head against this hard plastic because that innocent looking tray is probably covered in germs. Take precautions if you want to avoid getting sick. For instance, don't rest any food on that tray without a napkin or two placed beneath. Other surfaces to watch out for include armrests, seat belts, and buttons in the lavatory. Jeez, that's like everything. Due to time constraints, many of these areas of the plane are rarely, if ever, properly cleaned. Those pillows and blankets you often bug your flight attendant to bring you, well, those probably haven't been cleaned in years. Think folded and reused indefinitely. Be wary, for in these sordid conditions, even the biggest jar of hand sanitizer in the world won't save you. Though, those of us unafraid of germs, for one reason or another, typically make it off the plane alive. Hey, if you like watching videos like this, then you should check out Real Tech That Makes You Superhuman on my channel, All Things Human.